brought it to our attention and said we have to do this for our students and was relentless in making sure that we made this happen. The president of our Teachers Association, the Trenton Education Association, is Naomi Johnson of Florida. Graders. 
And we were just so amazed. And so we have bought this program. We are in year one. We're in our beginning stages. But we are ready, and, I'm a, and Dr. Johnson, who's now our chief academic officer, is going to talk to you a little bit about the program and where we are um, right now. And you'll see for yourselves. Um, most of you who are from the surrounding area, so you know that um, Trent Central High School, where we have this program, um, was closed um, in September. So we're going through some little rocky roads, right? But we're still implementing, uh, in my opinion, with a high degree of success. Um, there are certain attributes within this program that we don't have, such as we're supposed to have round tables, and I'm looking for a donor to help us get some tables <laughs> so that our children can learn instead of sitting at desks and learn in a constructive type manner. But um, that's just one thing, but it's not inhibiting our students. And just to see that we've gone from a mindset, I can't do that, where they come and take out for one, to I love physics, and how can I take physics? In less than a year, that's amazing. It is amazing. So our students went from I can't accept the challenge to I got this. Amazing. I don't want to hold you too long because I can talk. <coughs> anyway, at this particular time, I would like to introduce to you our chief academic officer who continued the work this year. We have components put in place with our, our teachers, and, then, and and we have, she's going to talk to you about the number of teachers that we have who are now teaching um, algebra-based physics as well. So I introduce to you at this time, Dr. Kendra Johnson. Good morning, colleagues. First, I'd like to thank you for joining the conversation. Today, we are highlighting and really seeking input as we engage in the discourse relative to increasing rigor and opportunity for all students. And as Naomi mentioned, we're at our infancy stages, but the data is beyond promising. And when you think about the national landscape regarding the number of STEM-related jobs that are unfilled, and the number of STEM-related jobs that are in the midst of coming that will be unfilled. The urgency of now is real. So the, the landscape here in Trenton began last year under the leadership of my predecessor, Dr. Duran and TEA. And it's continuing now with, I believe, an unprecedented amount of physics certified teachers at the end of this year. Um, we will have approximately 15 or so teachers. We're very proud of that. And we are starting our cohort of chemistry teachers because we want to continue the scope and sequence. So we are flipping the mindset. And as a chemist myself, I understand that we need to help students conceptually connect the dots. So we know that students learn more when we are conceptually connecting the dots for them. So we are having students understand physics and algebra together. And then we are building from that into chemistry. So we know we need to have teachers here who are trained to do that. And let me tell you, we have teachers who have emailed me and say, I don't want to be paid. But I want to be trained. So we have educators here in Trenton who want the knowledge to learn chemistry so that we can continue this pipeline. So the legacy of continuing this work is really in the midst. So our conversation today is one about digging deep into the research. If you go into the national database of what it takes, to respond to these data trends that will tell you that we are not producing enough college ready students, irrespective of race, but we know that it is daunting for students of color and for students who are living in poverty. Irrespective of these data trends, 
when you look at the data, students need to be engaged. That's the number one data point. Number two, you need to have them motivated. And that motivation needs to be situated in a space where students understand the content. And that leads us to the third body of research. You need to have an appropriate scope and sequence of courses. So when you go into urban epicenters like Trenton, like Newark, like Camden, you often see the lack of AP courses. You often see the lack of high level courses or you may see those courses and may, they may not be as rigorous as the courses in the suburban. We need to change that and we are working to do that with our partnership here today. You are with us today because one, we want to learn from what you are doing and we hope that we can work together to build a network of changing what's going on for students of color and students who are underprivileged due to their socioeconomic status because I just stand before you giving personal testimony as a student of color, first generation college student, and a chemist by training, that when you are afforded a stellar instructional program, you can do anything, and we have that opportunity for our students. So today, when you tour, please know that you're going to see students engage. You're going to see students presenting questions. You're going to see students using response devices so that they can interact with instruction. You will see student discourse because the constructivist mindset is that we want students to be constructing knowledge, to try to work through this so that they can make connections for themselves. Hopefully, you will see many instruction that is limited because we really want them to be the masters of their knowledge. So as we embark upon today, know, colleagues, that we're in day one of this journey together, but as we continue to work, we know that we're going to change the set of circumstances here in Trenton, and we think that if you too consider um, PSI, PMI, on your perspective landscapes, we can continue to build this space and change the narrative across the nation, and definitely here in New Jersey. So at this time, I'm going to turn it back over to my colleague, um, Naomi Johnson LaFleur, so we can set the stage for our day together. Janice Williams and 
Master, my first team. You've already met the mayor, and our president of city council is also with us, Mr. Zachary Chester. And I would like everyone on the superintendent's leadership team to please stand and be recognized, and our supervisor. Also with us, we have visiting superintendents. If you would just simply stand with your association partner. We have Hopewell. We have Representative Hamilton. And we have Montclair.
not a problem. <laughs> Madam President. Hello, everyone. Hello. Um, I'm Elizabeth A. Seuss. I am the principal of Dunn Middle School. And uh, we're so happy to have you here with us today. We're very excited to showcase some of the work that we're doing around PSI. And um, if you would like, we're, we're going to split at one moment. And we're going to split into three areas. Uh, a group of you will go visit one classroom, Mr. Kropinski's room. Another group will go into Mrs. Regina Smith's room. Another group will stay here. We have our students here who will be highlighting a lot of the lab work that they've been doing in science. And they're the ones that are going to be talking to you about the process and their feelings about PSI. And um, after that, we're going to rotate and rotate until everyone has had an opportunity to see all of our showcases. Is that okay with everyone? All right. May, may I offer that we use our bus assignments as our group assignments? So if I can draw our attention to the schedules, group one will be the group that will go to Ms. Smith's room, and you can have group two. So you can draw your attention to the agenda. Is that fair? Right. Mm -hmm. Group one? Who's leading group one? Who's leading group one? Yeah, I'll grab one of the good students. Yeah, I'll grab one of the good students. Would it be like you take them to this room and then come back? Just one student? Are they all presenting? Yeah, that's fine. Devin, can you? Just take it to the Smith's room. You okay with that? Okay, two. Two. This is the first study session. You know what we're Not much. 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 Not much.
Come back up, get the hot water.
hard work is coming right there.
all the work. What's the symbol for coefficient of kinematic friction? Kinetic. Kinetic. Okay. Exciting. 
And it was also something that as a district we kind of had to say, okay, how much of a cost is this going to be? Are we going to be able to maintain it? And is this a program that we are going to commit to? It's not going to be a one and done. Is it something that we're going to commit to? And it's going to be here and we're going to really see how it works. So as a principal, I'm so happy that we are continuing the program, that we're building on the program. It's not something that's one and done. We are actually seeing the success that we wanted to see, and we are just at the beginning stages. We have teachers who are so excited to be a part of this program, the instructional program. Um, the engagement of the students has increased, uh, and so I'm just very, very happy uh, that, that we're doing this and we're continuing it. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, I'm Elizabeth De Jesus, and I'm the principal of Dunn Middle School. I'm very familiarized with uh, PSI and also PMI. Um, we started PMI at Dunn Middle School last year. Um, it's not uh, as embedded as PSI because it's still not uh, a district-wide initiative as far as math is concerned, uh, but we saw a lot of benefits you know, with the program. And uh, when we were asked to do PSI this year, I was extremely excited because I am very familiar with the curriculum. And I, I just have to say that what I love about uh, PSI, PMI, is that it's, everything is there. Everything is there for the teacher. So not only do you have the scope and sequence, but you have your lessons planned for you. For you, you have your embedded uh, checking for understanding after every 10 minutes uh, of instruction. Uh, you also have the homework that is aligned with the lesson, and you also have the labs that are aligned with all of the units. And I think that's a win-win um, situation for any educator, not only here in the state of New Jersey, but uh, as a nation. So uh, I was very excited. And I think because we were familiarized with uh, PMI and we were fortunate to have all the technology needed to implement the program with Fidelity, it was um, very, very uh, easy uh, implementation uh, for us at Dunn Middle School. And we have uh, teachers that are just sponges willing to learn different strategies and pedagogical approaches to teaching the children. And this is something I tell my teachers all the time. You guys have the content. You have the content. The content is there. But what PSI does is presents the content in a student-friendly manner. And, and, and it incorporates all the best practices you know, that you need to make sure that the students are indeed mastering those, um, those skills. So I'm very pleased to have assisted the district in the implementation of PSI. Hi, my name is Rufa Bacharya, and I'm a sixth grade, seventh grade science teacher at the middle school. Uh, this was our first year of implementing the PSI. Um, and we had a wonderful support from the school as well as the district when we got started this year. Uh, the best thing, as I put a second on the stage, was that everything was ready for us. So we knew the units, we knew the material, we knew even the scope of sequence in the unit, what comes first and what comes later, homework class for everything that. And, uh, the major benefit that it's, I, I, we all experienced during this program was that uh, there was a lot of uh, cross-content connections. We had math going on in the science class, we had language arts going on. So we were in a science class supporting the other content, content area. So my kids in 6th grade, 7th grade, they are doing graphs. One of the very first things that we did, we started doing graphs, which was very much a new thing, which they learned in my room in science, and then they got it done in math. So when they moved into a math class, they were like, oh, we know that. Mm -hmm. So hence, that, that was the best thing about it. This has also very much uh, uh, helped my students uh, to get organized in the way they think. And they're able to even relate to things, you know, like how one, con one thing that they have learned in a certain particular lesson can be applied, you know, and applied to even their day-to-day -day life. So that was, that was the best part of it. So uh, we just recently had a solar eclipse. And um, my kids actually came back and told me it was me, we had an eclipse. And now we know what happened in the sky, you know. Where was the moon, the sun, and the earth were positioned? And that was a big for me. So, yeah, we have, has, we have had a wonderful response from this program. Thank you. Um, <coughs> sorry. Um, I teach physics at, at the 9th 
Great Academy, so I have all freshmen, and this is the best thing that's ever happened to me. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I'm not just saying that. I hate it. It's, it's absolutely, hands down, the best thing that's happened to me. I mean, um, you know, as, as it's been mentioned, um, lesson planning is minimal. You know, um, it's all done for you. It's all ready. Everything's online. So if the kids are home for some reason and forgot their packets at school or whatever, they can, you know, they know where they can find it online. Everything's there already. The pacing is perfect. Um, um, this classroom management is a dream now. Um, their student engagement is incredible. Um, they love the technology. I mean, I have no complaints whatsoever. And as far as I can tell, the students love it, absolutely. Um, I have students from last semester coming back to tell me that they miss physics, you know, so, <laughs> and they'll come in and do my do now, like showing off like they know how to do it, so it's, it's really, I mean, the, the excitement is ongoing, and um, a lot of them, I, I talk, you know, we routinely talk to them about taking AP Physics in the future, and a lot of them are very excited about taking AP Physics as well, so, um, you know, I, I can't, I just love it. <laughs> Um, but today we're talking about 
order to uh, help the teachers at Dunn, okay, integrate NJCTL as part of our PD. Um, we also learned simultaneously that NJCTL was working with the administration. And at that point, I took up an offer from uh, Dr. Knapp to uh, come on out to one of the PSI training programs uh, for teachers. So I did, even though I was a middle school teacher, middle school leader. Um, I figured I'd take her up on her offer. And goodness knows, I saw Patrick Chestnut say, come on in. Sure, you can come on in. Right? Yes. And, uh, you know, it was all a wrap. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Fabianco came in and taught one day. And uh, I thought it was great. The next thing I knew, uh, you know, we went down uh, south to uh, the Jersey School, which is part of TEA, and uh, got to meet uh, Mr. Goodman and Ms. Powell, Dr. Goodman, Ms. Powell. And uh, I'm, I'm just telling you, it, it's just been a great experience for me this whole way. So that's what made me want to do it. Thank you. the district for the partnership that you have had established to be able to support the development of your teachers, but more so to support the uh, learning at the child level, at the student level, in such a way that is really challenging to maximize their potential. And they're doing it in a fun way, as you said, interactive kind of way, and definitely um, the child-centered approach, which is wonderful. So congratulations, and you did an amazing job today. My question is, um, sort of looking at the collaborative learning that takes place, is there a component that has to do with more like a peer tutoring formal training where we maximize the potential of our eighth graders and maybe tutoring your sixth graders? Is there any peer to peer kind of tutoring that, that can be built or is built? So that it's a lot that you have that needs to further develop to maximize the potential of everyone in your students. So. so that component is not an element of PSI, but that's definitely a philosophical frame that's embraced within any school district. So we have peer-to-peer -peer tutoring that's established within a school community that Dunn utilizes, that Kilmer utilizes. So that's a part of our infrastructure that we utilize throughout our district. Mm -hmm. You're Absolutely. And we will continue to, to ponder this work for it. Thank you. Additionally, I just want to add, um, within um, the program itself, how the children actually learn and interact in the classroom. You'll see that if you, when we went from uh, building to building, the students sat there once they, you know, loosened up a little bit, and they conversed with one another to solve the equation, to say why and how. So in that context, they are using peer-to-peer. Yeah. -peer. Also, um, as Dr. Johnson said earlier, we're usually going to be usual, utilizing um, tutors from the from um, Princeton University to assist with um, our freshman academy as well. Any comments from any teachers on that before we? Before, but before. I just want to say any comments to Dr. Morano's question, then I'll go to Mrs. Powell. Um, I think that part of the methodology uh, does involve social constructivism, which uh, is part of PSI. The uh, teacher does a short lecture, and then the students work in smaller groups. And while they're working, they're tutoring each other. They're learning from each other. So informally, there is peer-to-peer -peer tutoring occurring every day. Yeah. And I uh, apologize if, uh, if I no. maybe was not clear with my question and comment, but I was thinking more about cross uh, grade Great levels in a way. Yeah. Looking yeah. at the eighth graders as role models, for example, yeah. and going down to the eighth grade level. Yeah. One of the comments yeah. that one of the young ladies made at one of the schools, for example, was that what she loves about the program is that there's more than one, for example, teacher in a particular class, or they love that one-on-one -on -one contact, whether it's with a peer or with a 
young adult, they really love and, and, and really cherish that, 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 that ongoing interaction. So, thank you. Thank you. And I believe Ms. Powell had a question. Yes, a comment, and then um, I have a question for the students. You know. The comment is that this is this collaboration is really exactly what we like to see happen, and it's the way that we know we can um, enhance change in our school districts to know that um, A, for the association and the administration to work together um, to ensure that student success. I mean, that's really, there, there isn't any finer, there isn't any more noble cause, really, than, than that. And so I um, commend you for the uh, working relationship that you've established, the fact that you're collecting the data and that you're keeping, keeping track of that so that we have um, good information about how, about the impact that it really has on the students and I think that it helps teachers as well because teachers are very interested in what happens to their students. So um, it helps them to, to see that their students will be doing something beyond what happens in that one particular class. Uh, my question <clears throat> for the students is um, a little two-part two question. Um, the first part is, did you ever really think that you would be able to um, work on these very, some of them are very complex, problems, some are a degree of difficulty, and the second part is um, how do your friends that are not part of this, or your family, how do they see your participation? Are you able to have conversation with them about some of the work that you're doing, and how do they react to you maybe being in the smart class or being with the smart kids? How does that, how does that work for you?
career, already stumbling on a very big subject that was already bad. And then my second semester, I had a great teacher who taught me geometry and like she covered all of the things that the number one teacher was supposed to cover and it made things great. Sophomore year comes around and I had another bad teacher for, uh, for algebra two and it just went downhill again. Now this year, uh, I have Ms. Hamden, who's a really great teacher. She like helps us, she interacts with the students while she's like making sure that all of us are going to work. The program itself, it provides enough assistance so that she can also be working with other students and with other teachers that are inside the classroom. And in my classroom, we have three. So they all work, they all like come together and they're, they're able to like make sure what is it that we are having trouble learning and what we're not. So right now we're ahead of by like a mile of the regular classes. Being an honor citizen has been a great, it's been a blessing. And well, my family is like happy. They're like, oh great, you're in a smart class, you're striving for success, striving for the future. And at first it was like, no, I don't want to do that. I don't want to take this class. I already have two AP classes that are hitting me from both sides, and no, I don't want to. And thanks to my vice principal, she's like, no, you have to stay in there. And <laughs> now I'm here, so thank you very much. Hey, thank you, Steve. You doing my honor the last time. I appreciate you came out. So we're going to just give uh, Ms. Johnson the floor. She's going to give some closing comments, and then I will end today's session. It's a little bit after two, we're going to we'll close this up really soon. And certainly, thank you everyone for coming. So, Ms. Johnson, the floor, and then I will close out. Thank you. Um, again, I'd just like to um, say that the association um, is very proud that we could help um, be instrumental in bringing this program um, to train public schools. And um, we're elated that we have the superintendent who was open um, to receive such an initiative um, from a quote-unquote union, okay, because he understands and we understand that we are partners and we are equally responsible for the success or failure of our students. So this collaboration is essential to move our district forward. We are clear on that. We don't agree on everything. We disagree sometimes. But we stay laser focused on the success of our students. And since we are laser focused, we can continue to move forward. I have to recognize with us two community partners um, who are always there with us. First, our PTO president, again, Mr. Mike Goodman, if you would just stand and be recognized. And also, another community person who works with us, she uh, sits with both the NAACP and the Urban League, Kareem Bruns, would you just stand and be recognized. And our board president just came in the room as well, Denise Millington. Again, I just want to say to the other districts, if you have any questions that we can, or anything that you need to uh, assistance with, if you're thinking about bringing this program to your district, if you need additional information, please feel free to reach out to me um, as a PowerPoint rolls around. My um, email is on there. But you can reach me at in Lafleur, in L A F L E U R, at trenton.k12.nj.us. Um, and also, um, I would be able to help you or assist you um, with getting in contact with the New Jersey for, uh, Center for Teaching and Learning as well. Thank you. As we close out today, uh, our best. And I think perhaps the most exciting part of today was certainly getting to see our teachers and our students in action. And I know for me, that's what I will take away from today as one of the brightest spots of what this whole day was about. But I just want to close out by reminding us that you often hear a lot of discussion about student achievement. And you often hear something that's 
says the achievement gap. When, when you close the achievement gap, students aren't performing. Well, this is an example of not just the achievement gap, because it's much more than that. It's an opportunity gap, because when our students and our teachers are afforded opportunities to re receive professional development, to get engaged, involved in, in lessons, to have supports and resources at their fingertips, both teachers and students, that's how you close underperformance. It's not about what we often hear, come in and remediate, and if they didn't learn it the first time, give them some more of that, give them more tutoring, give them more of this, more. It's not necessarily always about giving more of the same. What you heard from our teachers, what you heard from our students is this was something new, exciting. I heard the word excited several times. I heard the word happy several times. I heard the word engaged several times. And I heard the word from our teachers, support and resources. This is what it's all about. And it's nothing that we did on our own. We could not have done it on our own. We had certainly the association, our teachers association, and we had the, um, Dr. Nav, Rosemary Nav and her, who came in and laid it out very, very eloquently in our first meeting. And it was just, at first I thought this is too good to be true. I don't believe this, <laughs> do you remember? But you came back and you kept talking to us and showed us, and, and to Ms. Grant's point, this sounds like something we're just going to do once, and is it going to go away, and what is, is it going to last? And we've all seen those quote-unquote reforms that come through. But I don't see this, and I didn't, and I didn't hear from our teachers, our students, that this is a reform. This is truly something that is powerful, and it's something that has helped all of us do what we need to do and provide more opportunities for our students who at the end of the day are why we're here. Right. And so for that, I thank you and I know that we are going to remain committed to this. I hope that you all who are in other districts are interested can see the power of this just in today. And if you're like me and you heard it the first time, you might say that sounds too good to be true. Talk a little bit more, dig a little deeper, look at some of the data. Don't necessarily believe what you see from the first sight, but if you dig a little deeper, you're going to see it's not just us talking. You saw it today. It's not just what you saw one day. You see this every day in the classroom, and you heard from our teachers and our students that this is now becoming, as much students said, maybe not everybody yet, but you will get there, because students are beginning to see, and teachers are beginning to feel that they are supported in a way that we can make a difference. And so with that, I thank you for joining us today. I hope you've enjoyed your day, and we thank you again.